Smart and refined, but casual, is the name of the game here. Today we're going to be exploring my Pinnacle Tower room and all of the facilities and restaurants on offer. So let's get into it. Welcome to Auckland. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for my stay, or my next 5 videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. I'm of the opinion that the world needs a bit more honest travel content these days. So I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well, all without invitation. I always film without the company's knowledge and self-fund my trips to be sure I get a true experience. Then, I give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. This looks like a great place for a windmill, doesn't it? Well, at least a man named Charles Partington thought so when he built one in 1851, creating what would be a bustling and historic flour mill for the up-and-coming town of Auckland. Of course, the windmill is no more, having been demolished in 1950. But what's that saying? If you're gonna pave paradise, at least give me a Sheridan, or something like that. And so, that's what happened. In 1980, the Sheridan Auckland began construction, and some 25 years later was sold to Langham, which this hotel was branded as for around 15 years. Just before COVID, a major renovation began on the property, and when it reopened, it did so as a cordis. Cordis, which means heart in Latin, as they love to point out, is Langham's modern, upscale, and international brand, which has been taking over at a few of their older properties, including the first cordis, which opened in 2015, the conversion of the Langham Place, Mongkok, in Hong Kong. During the refurb, there was also a massive expansion here, building the 17-story Pinnacle Tower. The hotel now sports 640 rooms and suites. As we walk into the lobby area, admittedly, I would not want to see what this looks like at 2 p.m. when the hotel was at capacity. Throughout the property, you'll notice finishes and interiors that are classic but with a modern twist, a design that could go one of two ways stuffy and uptight, or casual and conversational. Perhaps because of Cordis's mantra, or perhaps it's just the Kiwi way, this place is definitely the latter, and because of that fits into my favorite type of urban hotel. Nice design, functional rooms, upscale facilities, and doesn't take itself too seriously. Before we continue the tour, let's take a look at where we are. Auckland is on New Zealand's North Island, and with its population of around 1.5 million people, accounts for around a third of the country's population. Surrounded by two bays, the waterfront is surely where the core of the downtown area is, and the Cordis sits just to the south of that in an upscale area surrounded by parks and universities. Your best bet to the airport is driving, just a 20-25 to 25 minute drive away. Now, we're going to walk over to the Pinnacle Tower and take a look at my room for this day. The property is perhaps best known for kicking off the Royal Tour in 1983, when the Sheridan Auckland hosted then Prince Charles and Princess Diana for their state dinner in the city. I booked this stay with Amex Fine Hotels and Resorts, and so at check-in I was upgraded from a standard king room to a pinnacle tower room, which features slightly larger and more modern facilities and views of the skyline. On this side of the hotel, there are two other entrances, the first used for the pinnacle tower, and the second mostly for events in the older part of the hotel but it is all more or less seamlessly connected.
I really love the backlit art format that they have at each of the elevator lobbies, all featuring different landscapes from across the country. I was excited to get room 2515, the 25th floor. But no, there is no 25th floor. The 2 signifies the pinnacle tower. I was on the 5th floor. Inside, the rooms are very smartly outfitted and reminds me quite a bit of the new M Gallery Hotel in Athens that I was at last year. While this design language is one that is being used by many hotel chains at the moment, I will say that Cordis stands out by using materials which will hold up very well for many years of use. Everything in the room felt solid and real, something that I find increasingly uncommon these days. There was a nice working and dining combo area, and a, um, unique light fixture above it. Each bedside has multiple outlets and a USB port, and this side also features a wireless charging USB radio. Do, do we still say radio? The mini bar is nicely stocked and is giving me distinct Park Hyatt vibes, ironically the next hotel I stayed at. After many days of instant coffee, I was happy to also see a proper coffee machine. If you support the content that I've been putting out on the channel, or honest travel content in general, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Those are the two easiest ways that you can tell YouTube that this video was worth your time, and always feel free to share it with as many people as you can. For anyone interested in supporting, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks very much for watching today. The closet area was a standard size, but it also included a separate luggage storage area with drawers built in below, which freed up a lot of space. The bathroom was a nice size and featured a full-size soaking tub as well as a shade that could be drawn down for privacy. I do also love these wall tiles and their subtle nod to the New Zealand silver fern. I, I just made that up, but I also think it might be true. Bath products were by Christoph Laudemiel, same same as the Andas Gangnam, which I stayed at in Seoul, but thankfully this time sparkling mint and not lavender. I'm curious, what are your opinions about bathroom products at premium hotels? Do you think a luxury brand is necessary? Should it be a unique scent? Personally, I think it's one of the more important small details that any hotel could have. I think luxury hotels should feature high-end, locally curated brands that feature scents rooted in the location. For premium brands like here at Cordis, I don't think it needs to be a super expensive brand but for the hotel's own sake, a well-known brand with a unique scent I think is key. For example, off the top of my head, I could tell you every hotel that I've ever had Aqua de Parma amenities at, and every time I see them in Duty Free, I'm reminded of those hotels. Anytime I smell something that's remotely white tea scented, my mind immediately goes to Weston, who I think are the pioneers of creating like a full scent story in their hotels. So, my point being, with the products, hotels need to be memorable. 
Last up we have my view, which was a little bit narrow in scope, but was a great place to watch the clouds roll in and out. So who is staying here? Well, it's a nice mix of couples and business travelers with a hefty dose of locals coming for tea or dinner, something that I always think is a good sign of a well-run hotel. I was here near Easter weekend, and so there was a large dinner buffet on offer, which wasn't really of interest to me, so I had dinner at the Chandelier Lounge. During the afternoons, it serves as a high tea lounge and sort of transitions to a wine bar at night, though they do serve a limited food menu throughout the day. Cordis is unfortunately one of those brands that doesn't publish menus online, so you'll need to take my word for it that the dinner menu was small, but it was well curated, with what I would say is typical all-day dining food for a premium hotel, but each with a bit of an elevated twist. I had what turned out to be an absolutely incredible veal schnitzel, or it might have been chicken. Either way, it was delicious, and service here was also very friendly and conversational. Just across is the Our Land is Alive bar. This one, atmosphere-wise, was a bit of a letdown for me, but I do think that that's my own fault. It just felt a bit bright and homey, when I imagined that it would just be a little bit moodier and perhaps less Irish-themed bar in New York designed for tourists-like. Anyway, though, like I said, that was just my own thought. It was a nice and comfortable bar, with seating at the outdoor terrace being my choice. This, by the way, is what happens when I'm at a hotel for one night, with an included $100 property credit. I can assure you, I never leave unused credit. Service here was borderline painfully slow, but well-intentioned, though the drinks did make up for the wait. The next morning, before we head to breakfast, let's take a look at the spa and pool areas. The sun came up a bit later than I was expecting, so admittedly this shot wasn't well timed, but it was a nice outdoor pool. When I returned later to get it again during the daylight, it was completely full of guests. Alright, for breakfast we're heading to the buffet at 8. Named 8 for the 8 international kitchens inside. The buffet was very good and a comprehensive breakfast spread, and even had some healthy options like a chocolate waterfall and ice cream. What more could you want? In all seriousness though, the food quality was really good. And in addition to everything you see here, there was also an egg station available. Our last stop is going to be at the fitness center, which is a strange setup, split up into multiple small rooms. But it had everything that you'd need, though it's probably a bit small for 640 rooms. So overall, I was pleasantly surprised by the Cordis. I knew it was going to be a nice hotel, but it really did far exceed my expectations, 
and I'd be more than happy to go back. Also, given what was on offer here, I'm antsy to get over to a Langham soon. I really do hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on the bell so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming content over the next few weeks. I'll see you next time on my Qantas flight from here in Auckland to Brisbane. Oh, and thanks for watching to the end.